Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chanel and today we're talking about grad school. So I feel like it's good to start out by saying that New York State requires teachers to get a master's degree. And not only do they require teachers to get a master's degree, but they don't pay for it and they expect you to get it within five years after getting your initial certification. So basically, if you graduate with your undergrad degree and then you begin teaching, you have five years to get your master's degree, Bruh. which I think is absolutely insane and it's really unrealistic. And that's just New York State. <laughs> I initially thought that I was going to get my graduate degree a few years down the road after I began teaching because I thought it would be way too much as a first year teacher. But with the pandemic and everything, I thought that I should just continue with my master's degree and just start it right away. So I was looking for three main things when I was searching for my school. One was that the money, of course, I wanted a low cost tuition. Two, I wanted my classes to be online because I was going to start my master's degree while I was being a first year teacher and I was going to be a full time first year teacher and being a full time graduate student. And that was a lot. So it was really important to me that my graduate degree was online so that I didn't have to commute. And the third one, of course, I really wanted to be the school that I went to my undergrad degree in, which was SUNY Oswego. I love that school so much, but if I couldn't get in there, then I would just go anywhere else. But let me just share with you that if New York State did not require me to get a master's, I would not have gotten a master's. I only got my master's because it was required. If it was not required, I would not have put myself in the situation to get a master's. But I was accepted into the school that I wanted to be in, SUNY Oswego. I wanted to go there because I knew the professors, I knew the program, I was comfortable with the program, and I felt that it was a good school to support me and the cost of getting my graduate degree when I had no support from the government and no scholarships and no loans the cost of just a tuition alone because I lived at home was eighteen thousand dollars oh my god I spent eighteen thousand dollars on a degree that I didn't even want Bruh. I'm thinking about it now and I cannot believe that I spent that amount of money on a degree that I did not even want. <sighs> but other than that, I did say that I wanted my program to be online, but originally the program that I applied to was a hybrid, but since I started in 2020, right in the midst of the pandemic, it did turn into being all completely online. So I was really, really fortunate that I was able to take all of my classes online. So I got my degree in curriculum and instruction and I specialized in Spanish education for seven through 12. And I really wanted a degree that was kind of general enough because I didn't know if I wanted to continue teaching Spanish at the high school level for the rest of my life. So I really wanted to make sure that I found a degree that was general enough so that way if I changed my ideas and my career plan changed, then that way I would be set up to kind of lead myself into another direction because my master's degree was just kind of general in education. And with these classes, they were all very, very general, except for the ones that I took with my advisor, which were the ones that I specialized in Spanish education. And the general ed classes that I had to take to meet the requirements to get this degree, they just... I don't know, I wasn't that happy taking them and I really did try to engage in the discussions, to engage in the readings, to really understand what was going on and really like get the most out of this degree. But I just didn't find like a passion or a fire in me in these classes. And I think the topics themselves were interesting. These are the classes that I took, but I didn't find the classes to be that engaging, which is interesting because I got a degree in curriculum and instruction. However, the classes that I took with my advisor, who was the one who gave me the specialization credits that I needed in Spanish and for Spanish teaching, I loved that portion of the degree. If I did not take those classes with her, I think that the whole degree would have gone to waste, but I use all the materials that I learned from her like almost every single day. So I really think that it's important to have a really good graduate degree advisor because mine was like the angel sent from the heavens to guide me. And I was so happy because she created these classes tailored to my needs and my wants. Aww. And it was like everything that I needed. It was everything that I wanted. And I was so happy with those classes specifically, but the gen ed classes, and I don't think that those classes helped me specifically in the classroom. I think they were just very general knowledge. 
much about education, but I don't really think that they carried over as well as I wanted them to, and they definitely did not carry over as well as the specialization classes with my advisor. I, of course, was a full-time student, and I was a full-time teacher, and it was my first year teaching, and we were in the pandemic, and it was my first time living away from home and teaching, and it was so much. All of those things, that's a big amount of things to have on your plate, but being a first year teacher in the pandemic while being a graduate student full time, I think it was the best time for me to get a degree because although it was really, really difficult, I found myself with so much extra time as a first year teacher because of the hybrid lesson format that we were in. And it was like, I didn't feel overwhelmed by big class sizes. My teaching load was kind of small. I had a lot of extra planning and prepping time during the day. Um, I was able to take things slow and because of all of that, I was really able to go home and focus on my graduate work. Like I wasn't stressed out and burnt out after every single day. But for me as a first year teacher, it was all I knew. It was the cards I was dealt. I didn't know anything prior to that. And to be dealt with those cards, having smaller class sizes, um, having more planning and prepping time, it was everything that I needed. Sadly, I don't have that now going back to a normal school year. And I think that if I were to have started my graduate degree right now, I would be so overwhelmed because I go home every day and I'm so mentally exhausted so I couldn't imagine going and sitting on an asynchronous class or a synchronous class or doing work or participating in discussions like I would have no brain fuel left in me at all. And there are a lot of people who do kind of criticize online education. I of course wanted an online degree where I could earn my credits while taking them at my own time but I don't think that I got as much out of an online class as I would have during an in-person class because I know during an in-person class, I'm obviously much more engaged and I really do push myself even more. But on the online portion, it was just so easy for me to just become distractive and to turn off my mic and to turn off my camera. And it's not to say that like, I didn't try it all because of course I did, but it was just a lot more easy to fall into those habits. And I think building those one-on-one -on -one connections with the professors other than my advisor, would have helped me more to engage in the material and the lessons. So it was kind of like a pro and con thing to me. It was a pro because of course I could go home and do my classes at home, but it was a con because maybe I didn't get as much out of these classes as I could have as to if they were in-person classes. And post-grad, here I am a year later, um, being a full-time teacher still, just not doing the graduate classes at the same time. And do I think that these classes benefited me in the classroom? I I think overall, I don't think I would have been in much of a different position as I am right now. It was just those general education classes, which was like six classes that really didn't, for me, like come over into the classroom and they didn't help me like as a teacher, but the classes that I took in my specialization with my advisor, they 100% carried over. And I think because of that aspect, yes, it did of course benefit me, but let's imagine that I was in a world where I only took those general education classes or I didn't have a great advisor or I didn't have the opportunity to specialize in my program, then I don't think I would have taken as much as I would have with my graduate degree. So in my final conclusions, I don't think that teachers really need a master's degree because one, we have to do so much professional development. It's insane the amount of professional development that teachers need. And because of that alone, like I don't really think that teachers really need a graduate degree unless if that's something they're really yearning for. And that's not to say like, oh, if a person really does want their graduate degree, that I'm saying they shouldn't get it. Of course you should go and get it. There are graduate degrees that are so amazing and that would fit you personally. Maybe this one wasn't the best fit for me personally overall, but there were of course some small factors that fit me in the time and the being in, in the place itself. But was it worth the price for me? Was it worth $18,000? Well, I couldn't get my professional certification if I didn't get my master's degree, so there's one part to it. But I don't think and I don't understand why a graduate degree is worth like the tuition credits are worth so much more than just a regular degree. And that was something that I really struggled with financially because literally every single paycheck was going towards this degree and being a first year teacher and being on the lower end of a salary and living away from home and living in a more expensive area and having an animal, like <laughs> there's were just so many aspects that made it difficult for me to pay for that degree, but I did, but I don't think it's realistic that New York State expects teachers to pay out of pocket 
for this graduate degree when at the same time they mandate so much professional development hours at the same time. So that's kind of a lot and that's a little bit of a ramble. I didn't want this video to be like 30 minutes. I really just wanted to get to the point. Um, if you want to know more about my graduate degree story, comment down below. I would be happy to share it with you. If you did enjoy this video or you did find it useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and potentially subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here for the long run. And honestly, if you're getting your graduate degree, I wish you the best of luck or if you're thinking about it, I hope I didn't scare you away from getting one. But if it's something that you really wanna do, I would just encourage you to really look hard and really talk to those people and make sure it's a school and a program that fits for you personally. And it's something that sets your soul on fire because if it's not something you really wanna do, you're not going to get a lot out of it and you may regret it down the road.